Hello and welcome back to the Angerati studio. I hope you enjoyed the sessions with uh, Christine earlier on and uh, uh, I'm back in the hot seat and I'm, uh, I'm joined now by uh, Frank who's the director of Smart Grid at uh, Atos World Grid. And uh, firstly Frank, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for thank welcoming me. You, yeah. And uh, Frank, we were talking a little bit off air about uh, you know, your experience of this uh, utility sector. And one of the questions I wanted to ask is that there seems to be a prevailing message about the increasing use of IT uh, and this IT OT convergence conversation. Mm -hmm. um, what are you seeing as some of the key drivers in terms of what's changing in the, in the utility market space right now that is causing that conversation to happen with more urgency? Mm. Okay, that's a very interesting question because actually what is driving the utilities to look more and more at IT are drivers which in the first place do not relate directly to technology. Uh, the utility sector has been built up over the last uh, decades and cent even centuries over quite a, a simple value chain, starting with generation of uh, electricity or production of gas, then transport, distribution and retail in a very simple one-sided value chain which was really uh, the heart of the value chain of utilities. What is happening today is that if you take the two ends of this value chain, generation on one side and retail consumption on the other side, both are really changing very heavily and for non-technical reasons. If you look at the generation side, we switch more and more from centralized uh, big um, volume of power generation through nuclear, through gas, through coal or other resources to decentralized, non-predictable, renewable generation. Okay, And the reason for that is that resources, climate, uh, government, political reasons put more and more pressure on utility to develop decentralized renewable. On the other side of the value chain, you have the consumer. The consumer used to be very simple for the utility. His, his job was to pay the bill, basically, and uh, not looking too much at how much he has consumed and see it as really a commodity, uh, not very active consumer. And now more and more, the co end consumer becomes an active player in the chain because he wants to control his electricity or his energy bill. So he wants to modulate, he wants to erase some consumption sometimes. He has now also the possibility to produce energy through solar panels on his roof, for example. So he becomes not only a consumer, but also a generator. And more and more he will use electromobility, electric vehicle, with the impact it has on his load profile and his way to consume. So both ends of the value chain are changing quite a lot and what is needed for the utilities to cope with this huge change of model is to be able to manage data and IT systems to transform actually these threats into opportunities for the utility sector. And what are those opportunities? The opportunity is basically to switch what the utility says sometimes is to switch from volume to value. Okay. Right. What is for sure is that the business model of selling electricity and gas to B2B or B2C customers has been built up again over the decades on volume, okay? More and more energy consumption. Now, and we see that uh, in macroeconomic uh, indicators, especially in developed countries, the level, the overall level of consumption is either stabilizing or even decreasing in some cases. So what can the utility do about it? Well, not only seeing that as a threat reducing the business volume, but developing services, developing new ways to interact with customers so that it can develop a more valuable customer relation. And there again, IT systems can help. And th that is one of the things that I'm struggling with in terms of everybody is saying, oh, we can have a deeper relationship with the customer and, uh, and so on. But what I struggle with is why, you know? So if I'm just gonna take a opposing viewpoint, mm -hmm. I have my phone company trying to have a relationship with me. I've got my uh, cable provider, if they aren't the same people, trying to have a relationship with me. Um, the 
thing I think about the least is my electricity. Let's stay with electricity, but the, there's water and everything. I'm not that interested in having a relationship. Mm. What I'm interested in is you making sure that you're providing me the electricity at a price that I think is fair mm. and it doesn't stop. Mm. That's all yeah. I'm interested in. Yeah. So why does a utility need to have a relationship with me? What's mm. changed? Mm. That's a very relevant question. Yeah. What you're saying in other words is that electricity is a commodity. What you want is to get it, not to be stopped, and to get it at the best possible price, right? Just like water, electricity, there are a few commodities like that, which we do not see really as a service, but as something we need, something we want, at the best possible price. So there are two ways in answering your question. The first way, I think by far the most important, is the price itself. What is differentiating one electricity or gas provider to you from the other? It's the possibility to secure, of course, your supply, not being cut, and to get the best possible deal. Would you be a personal, a residential customer, or even more a B2B customer? So then the question is, how can the utility build up the best possible deal for you? So in this changing world that I described, in order to build this offer up, the utility needs to be able to manage the variation, you know, the dynamics of this value chain that I described. So to take the best possible use of the decentralized generation available on the network, even at your place, if you have some, okay? So to do that, you need to have the data, to manage them, to integrate them into an offering, and to manage your own profile, for example, integrating your possibility to reduce your consumption at some points in time, and then to valorize this, what you call a peak shaving possibility that, you, you, that belongs to you, but to put a value on that from the electricity market. And for that, you need a utility, okay? So to put together this best possible deal for you as a consumer, the utility needs to manipulate quite a huge level of data in order to build up the best possible offering for you. That's the first and most important answer. There is still a second one, which relates to the telco, which relates to the cable media operators that you described. It's called convergence, okay? It's not a new word. We know that many, many communication channels will progressively in time converge, and there is a kind of fight between the operators to provide the service to the end consumer through different channels. Why would the utility sector be out of this game? I mean, they have a connection with 100% of the consumers on one place, okay? They are building up more and more communication networks for their own needs, okay? To provide the metering data and things like that. But once this infrastructure is in place, then it can be of a very interesting use to provide a much wider level of service, just as legitimate as the phone or media or any type of uh, operator. So what you're describing there, when I look at it, is actually a market that has been quite a monolithic market going through a transition where if you were to actually look at it in 10 years time you'd probably see a hugely fragmented market uh, energy producers will be big commercial outfits potentially I, I, I read a statistic somewhere that Walmart uh, generates across all its retail outfits enough energy to power a small city. Uh, so you, you're, you're getting a whole range of different actors coming into the mix. Mm -hmm. So when you start looking at that, do you think the utility, and the word comes from public utility, mm -hmm. as we know it, is going to cease to exist? No, I, I don't think so. I think for sure the market is already becoming more and more dynamic. That's very clear. And uh, the time of uh, monopoly, public sector utility covering one market in each country is already over for some time now, actually. 
So there is much more dynamic. Now, how will it change? Well, of course, uh, I don't have any crystal ball just like anyone else, yeah. so we will see. But what is, I think, very present on this market is that it still remains a very important capital intensive market because I describe what is changing, but of course, the change process itself is not going to, uh, from one day to another, completely, you know, modify the existence of the plants, the networks. It is very asset incentive. It is very technical. So the technical competence of the guys, you said, I don't want to be cut. Okay, it's not automat automatic. Huh? It relies on a, mm. on a very important infrastructure and set of expertise. And the relationship to customer, there is this level of trust that you have to have with your utility company, maybe higher than for some other services that you believe, okay, if, uh, if it fails one day, uh, I'm not dead. Uh, my family will continue to have a light and, uh, and heat and these kind of things. So for all these reasons, my personal vision, so I still make a crystal ball exercise, is that there will be utilities that will really take this uh, change process as an opportunity that will still be there and that will transform their business model using uh, IT and OT technology that companies like ours can, can bring to them to facilitate this transformation. And there will be some others that will also still be there, but maybe with a less uh, dynamic approach and that may lose a part of their market share. I, I think it will go that way. And of course, in some part of the business uh, value chain, you can have some new players coming in. It is also the case today uh, in many, many uh, countries where you have some uh, smaller operations that take some uh, specific niche in the, in the new market that is going. But I definitely see the utilities as being still present for yeah. for a long term. Yeah. And, uh, and I suppose there's also uh, uh, an abstraction that needs to be made, doesn't it? Because when we say utility, we need to be, we need to define that because the utility That's can clear. have many shapes That's and clear. sizes. They can own the transmission system or not own the transmission system. Exactly. They can just be a billing engine, mm. you know, a mm. customer relationship engine and mm. have no generation or they could have the entire stack. Exactly. Uh, you know, so it gets incredibly complicated. Yeah. Um, just before we end, because we're coming to the end of our uh, time here, and uh, this uh, concept of OT and IT convergence uh, mm. is being talked a lot, uh, about a lot. What I wanted to try and get and understand is what shape of utility can benefit the most out of that? Because mm. I would argue if you are a utility that's just a billing and marketing engine, mm. you probably don't need the OTIT, or do you? Mm. Okay, I think the, well, what you said is quite relevant. Uh, all what we described on the market has to then apply to a specific matrix depending on the regulation and the market design of each country. Now, this convergence, I think, impacts much more the uh, retail and the commercial uh, part of the value chain, which is not, uh, we, which kind of seems strange, uh, yeah. seen from uh, in the first place, because this part of the value chain used to be exactly for this reason, completely disconnected from the operational technology world. They didn't need to have any kind of dynamic real, near to real time information, because what they needed basically was one index per month, sometimes per six months, to send an invoice to the customer, and that was all. If you want now to design dynamic pricing offering, demand response, electric vehicles management systems, all these kind of things, you need to be connected to real-time data coming to the field. And this OTIT convergence, I think, impacts much more this part of the value chain than the traditional part, which is also very impacted, but which already manipulated quite a lot of operational data, like the network management uh, part, for example. Now, this part of the value chain is more impacted by the volume of data because they used to get some data from time to time. Now they can be overwhelmed by very big volumes. And that is, that, that, that is where the next thing comes in because I, uh, uh, just to, I know that that was my final question, but I, I, I think what you just said there just leads me onto one more piece, which is the volume of the data. And uh, are you within Atos 
because not everybody can deal with that volume of data. So how is the industry helping the utility now deal with this volume of data? Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you go from a world where you're used to having data at a certain velocity and a certain volume, you get very mm -hmm. comfortable in that world. Yeah. And it's fine if that increases slightly, but what we're talking about is a step change. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do you see that there's a need for some new skills, some new initiatives, or is that a market opportunity for companies like Atos to say, well, we've got all those skills, we'll mm -hmm. just sell them to you as a service? Yeah. yeah. So actually, we have in Atos quite a big experience in the management of huge volume of data coming from other markets like finance, e-payment, telecommunications. So we have this DNA and this infrastructure because it's always quite related to the infrastructure capabilities to have this big data to take this buzzword yeah. Yeah. management capability. So that's an opportunity in this sense. Now. There is something more on top of that, which is how to develop value on this data. And that's the most important thing. And there comes back our knowledge, our footprint in the utility sector, because what makes again the difference between two utilities and maybe two IT partners for the utilities are the ones that will just manage the data in a, in a good way, in a professional way, so that they can take some direct use of it and then the ones that will be able to analyze, to develop value, to create new business models based on this data, and these ones will need to go deeper into the understanding of the business process of the, of the utility sector and to be really a partner to develop new business models. And we at OS, especially with the ENU uh, management uh, that we have in the company, are really keen on working with our utility partners also on this value creation to, to, side. To develop new business models. And I, I'm afraid that that is the end of what we've got time for today, Frank. And uh, what I'm hoping for is that the next time we meet, we can now uh, talk about some of this business model innovation and, uh, and bring some of that to life, because I think that would be a very interesting discussion to have as well. Okay, okay. that and, will be my pleasure. Uh, yeah. And thank you for watching uh, this interview. There are many more uh, interviews on the Angerati website, as well as all the presentations from European Utility Week. And um, obviously, there, there is an uh, uh, Atos webinar which we did, which touched on exactly this subject. Uh, which will be linked to this interview, so I encourage you to watch that as well. Thanks again for watching.